बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम। Assalamualaikum uh, and uh, thank you, Amna. Assalamualaikum and a good morning to everyone. It's really a pleasure uh, being here, and it's really a pleasure welcoming all of you to this uh, webinar. Uh, I think it's a very important subject. Uh, Iran uh, applied for uh, the membership of the SCO. I think it was in the year 2008, and nearly after 15 years, it became a member of the SCO uh, earlier this year uh, in September. Now the basic thing is that SCO is an organization which has really progressed uh, in the last uh, few years, maybe in the last two decades, I would say. And um, I think uh, becoming a member of this organization will have uh, important benefits for Iran. But uh, I think uh, we need to look at uh, Iran's membership of the SCO from different angles. What is uh, what are Iran's expectations from becoming a member? Uh, how would uh, it pan out in terms of uh, the various sanctions which Iran has on itself, imposed by the West, and and then like uh, what could be the benefits which the organization would derive from Iran's membership? So I think these are some of the key questions which are uh, which are there, and I am sure we have such a distinguished panel of speakers, and they will be able to address these as well as uh, they will be able to enlighten us. On uh, Iran's uh, forthcoming role in the SCO. Uh, once again, uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us. And over to you, Amna. And I'll be a keen listener. And I will have some questions which I would like to ask the distinguished panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Um, we have uh, Dr. Fozia Amin with us today, who will uh, moderate this session. Dr. Fozia Amin is a lecturer at the Department of uh, International Relations, National Defense University. Her PhD thesis is on uh, evolving strategic competition in the Indian Ocean, implication for the South Asian region. She did her MSc in Defense and Diplomatic Studies from Patna Chinna University. Rabat Bindi and MPhil in strategic and nuclear studies from NDU. Her areas of interest include power politics of Indo-Pacific, Iranian and Middle Eastern politics, nuclear politics of South Asia, and other regional issues. Dr. Fozia has a number of national and international publications on her credit. Also, she has contributed book chapters in different books published by the Center for Pakistan and Gulf Studies and National Defense University. She has participated and represented Pakistan in a number of international conferences and bilateral dialogues abroad. With this, uh, over to you, Dr. Fozia. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Amna. It's a pleasure to be here with you once again, and thanks to Institute of Regional Studies for inviting me and giving me the opportunity. to moderate this wonderful session on iran's membership in sco and opportunity we have a wonderful panel of very distinguished speakers to deliberate on the subject i will be um, introducing them one by one later on let me set the stage first and provide the basic tone for this important event um, first of all iran's uh, step to becoming a full member of the shanghai cooperation organization sco is a very significant not only for iran but also for the other players the organization which includes china um russia and india in addition to tajikistan um kyrgyzstan um tajikistan uzbekistan and uh, further pakistan as members accounts for about one third of the world land mass and nearly one quarter of global gdp the accession process is expected to take up to 2 years to complete the iranian media welcomed the decision as a great victory for the country's new president ibrahim raisi the approval highlights iran's closer ties with china and russia at a time 
when all three countries are facing mounting pressure from Washington. While Iran may not see much short time uh, benefits, the move signals um, uh, which is um, closer ties to China, one of the organization's most powerful member state, as well as Russia, Iranian media describe the membership as uh, an evidence that Iran and China are moving extremely close, claiming that perhaps um, pressure by China and Russia led to admitting Iran into the organization. And the same is the case with the academia. They are looking um, towards Iran differently. Um, and both Raisi and Iranian Supreme Leader um, Ali Khamenei have um, uh, repeatedly stressed that the country must look to the East, not only to resist its economic isolation from the West, but also to find strategic allies that would help it uh, reach to, um, to a new agreement on the nuclear program, addressing the banking and trade uh, problems um, US sanctions have imposed on Iran, and strengthen its role in the Middle East and Asia. Finally, over the past few decades, China and Iran have developed a broad and deep partnership centered on China's energy needs and Iran's resources, as well as, I would say, um, significant non-energy economic ties, um, arms sales and defense cooperation and geostrategic balancing against the United States. With this perspective and overview, now I would like to invite the distinguished panelists to share their views. It is a great honor for me to introduce Deputy Ambassador Mohammed Sorhabi as a first speaker of the session. Um, Mohammed Sorhabi is an Iranian senior diplomat with 27 years of uh, experience in foreign service. He has a master degree in international relations from University of Tehran. He has served in the embassies and uh, consulate generals of Iran in pa Pakistan, and also in the uh, representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran in the Organization of Islamic Countries, OIC. He has also worked as the deputy head of mission in the representative of Iran in OIC. Currently, he is deputy head of mission in the embassy of the Islamic Republic of Iran in Pakistan. Ambassador Sohabi, I would request you to shed some light on what is the significance of SEO for Iran and what are the Iran's expectations from SEO. Over to you, sir. Ambassador Sohabi, are you there? He's muted. I think you have to unmute him. Amna, could you please check? Hamad, can we unmute uh, Mr. Sirhan? I have already sent him a request for unmute. Ambassador Sohabi. Yes. Hello. Yes, you, are, can you, have my voice? you have my voice? You can hear. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm not familiar with, with, the, with, with this system. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Uh, and uh, again, thank you very much. It makes my proud uh, to be among the thinkers. Uh, Madam, I am trying to, to explain the situation in, the, in this regard. And my attempt is uh, to, to the last important points in this uh, opportunity of uh, Iranian uh, in Shanghai organization. Uh, you know that uh, as my friends and Steam's audience uh, are well aware, the purpose of establishing of this organization is to promote and develop uh, regional cooperation, friendship uh, between the members to, to promote effective political, scientific, uh, cultural cooperation in the field of education. Uh, the other fields is energy, transportation, environment, and, and also you know that the counter-terrorism, uh, counter-extremism, and so on and so. It seems that, the, uh, that uh, this organization will be a suitable regional mechanism to strengthen regional convergence and promote the development of countries in the region. Uh, as a result of the follow-up of the uh, permanent membership uh, of the Iran in the Shanghai in the uh, SCO, finally coincided with the participation of uh, Mr. Raisi, uh, Honorable uh, President of the Islamic Republic of Iran in the, I guess that the 21st, yeah, 21st summit of the SO in, uh, in Dushanbe, Tajikistan. And all eight main members countries of SCO uh, unanimously agree to uh, request of or, uh, my country's membership in this organization and uh, the legal, technical, and administrative process of this membership began. Uh, for Iran's permanent membership in the SCO, the Secretariat has been activated in the foreign ministry in Iran. And uh, they are preparing the necessary document to sign the necessary document and agreement in this field. You know that the documents are uh, then submitted to the parliament, uh, Iranian assembly, uh, consultative assembly for approval. Therefore, the final uh, uh, stage uh, in this, uh, uh, for, for this membership are down with the cooperation with the parliament and the process uh, and uh, this uh, process requires time due to, to, to the technical and executive nature of, the, of this process. The final approval of Iran members in the SCO is uh, the beginning uh, uh, to racial process that will take, I guess that one and a half or two years, I, I guess that it takes time. Uh, Acceptance of the application of the Iran for membership in the SCO, SCO uh, has been an important step and I guess will play a positive role in developing cooperation and our country's relation with its member in the bilateral, regional and, uh, and international dimensions new capacities at the disposal to Tehran, especially in the field of the security and international cooperation. Iran's memberships in SCO will be the practical end of the failed Iran's isolation. That's one of the, my, my, my sisters uh, referred to this. Iran's isolation project by some Western countries, as you know, 
uh, who. And uh, as an in institutional mechanism of regional convergence will promote bilateral and multilateral relation between Iran and individual members. This process has already started on and uh, the sideline of the recent meeting of the organization, uh, the official of the Iran have had constructive meeting and uh, talks with active members of this organization. On the sideline of the recent summit uh, of the organization, honorable, honorable president of Iran, while talking the support extended by the government and uh, the uh, government of Pakistan and prime minister of Pakistan in acceptance of Iran's membership in the Shanghai organization. It has reiterated the expansion of the cooperation between the two countries in all fields. Thanks again for, for prime minister. As I mentioned at the beginning, the SCO is a multi-dimensional organization, including cultural, economic, political, security, and the other fields. And Iran's presence as one of the large country and a regional power in SCO will make the, uh, the will, will make the organization stronger than before. I, I, I emphasize by this. Also, Iran's full membership in the SCO is a positive development in the organization and the region, which created a new opportunity to expand cooperation between Iran and the other uh, countries in the region. The Islamic Republic of Iran enjoy many religious, historical, cultural, and other fields with many of the current members as you know, which can be considered as a strong basis for promoting regional convergence. Iran has always emphasized the need for further development in co cooperation of the member countries of the organization in the regional and inter international areas and has necessary capacity to help advance the process of regional convergence. Iran's, you know that the geopolitical and geoeconomic position in the region has also given Iran uh, the capacity to be active in the me middle of transportation and transit highway. I repeat it again, in middle of the transportation and transit highway also has necessary technical capacity to develop, develop roads and a good infrastructure. My country as uh, one of the safest countries in the region and also in the world can be a safe destination for economic investment and regional macro and micro plans. The international mechanism of this organization are also important to, for, for us. Uh, and we are committed uh, to, to implementing these mechanism with the cooperation and assistant to uh, assistant of members regarding regional issue and issues related to international peace and security. It's very, very important in this field. Iran can also be a reliable partner, reliable partner to international peace and security. Iran can also be uh, uh, in the security in the region and among the members of the, uh, of the uh, SCO organ, organization. Iran as the largest country in the Persian Gulf region emphasis on the sustainable security in the region without the presence of trans-regional expansionist, trans-regional expansionist powers and has presented important plan, including that 
uh, you know that one uh, peace plan for most. In this regard, we, we raise it to, to the other countries. About Afghanistan, uh, Iran as Afghanistan immediate neighbor, you know, also support the for formation of a fully inclusive government with representative of all ethnic groups, including Tajik, Turkmen, Pashtun, Turkmen, uh, Hazare, and others, and sees it, uh, it as the only way to restore stability, peace, and development in Afghanistan. Iran has hosted, you know, you know, you know better than, than me uh, that uh, Iran hosted more than 3 million Afghan refugees for at least four decades. And is now ready to help rebuild Afghanistan and restore lasting peace, inshallah, lasting peace. I, um, uh, I back it to, to the uh, uh, SCO and again emphasize. Uh, this organization decision to accept full membership of Iran is a major step toward develop relation with the neighboring and uh, an important driver for Asia oriented foreign policy of Iran. Neighboring and important driver for Asia oriented foreign policy of Iran. From now, Iran will use active diplomacy to strengthen relations with the dip uh, diplomatic corps of the member countries within the framework of uh, this organization. We will continue our efforts to take advantage of indigenous initiatives to advance the interest of the region. I hope uh, it is hoped that the countries of the region realizing uh, the need of the time and in order to develop peace, stability, develop, uh, development and prosperity by taking advantage of the geopractical, geopolitical uh, scope of this organization as a result of the Iran's acceptance accelerate the development of bilateral and uh, and multilateral cooperation between two to, to each other and with Iran. Uh, unity and convergence among the countries in the region where we share common interests and leads require the indigenous development of relation uh, and cooperation and uh, for priority of neighboring in the foreign uh, relation and international relation. Unfortunately, for years, relation with our, neighbor, our neighbors in our region have been sacrificed, has been sacrificed to the interest of the great colonial and expansionist powers, such as United States which has no interest in our development and unity and pursue their own uh, interest among us. Now that we understand uh, the dire consequences of the military and political intervention of the trans or regional powers, it is time to join hands and write the fate, write the fate at our national in our own hands. Uh, I want to uh, refer it one uh, Arabic word, Vata'avunu, alal berre wa taqwa, wala ta'avunu alal isme wal utwa. Thank you very much. Uh, for this opportunity to me, and uh, I'm at your service. Again, thanks. Thanks a lot.
Thank you so much, Ambassador Sokhabi, for sharing your valuable insights and explaining Iran's orient, uh, oriented diplomacy to SCO, Asia-oriented diplomacy to SCO, and uh, the significance of SCO for Iran. Just a little housekeeping before we move to the second speaker. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type uh, all those questions into the chat box in your Zoom control panel. I'll bring uh, up your, uh, these questions during the presentation. And we will also have time for questions at the end. Now we have another distinguished speaker in this panel who have um, extensive knowledge about the Iran because she has been ambassador to Iran, Ambassador Rifat Masood. Ambassador Rifat Masood is a career diplomat with wide experience of diplomacy and having fluency in Persian language. She joined the Foreign Service of Pakistan in July 1987. She also had various diplomatic um, assignments in the country's mission in the United Kingdom, the United States, Turkey, and France. She was section officer in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs from 1988 to 1991. In um, 2014 to 15, she served as Director General Policy Planning, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She was also um, the Director General, South Asia Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ms. Rifat was also the Madam, we, we don't have your voice. I think she has a connection problem there. Ahmad, we can't hear. Could you please intervene? Her Excellency was Pakistan's first. Is well, it clear it's now? On her end. Yes, it is. Can't hear you. Can't hear you, sorry. Dr. Fauzi, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, 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 you are perfect. Okay. Should I repeat, Dr. Uh, Ambassador no. Rifat's introduction? No, no, I know. Or I it was it complete? <laughs> No, if you want, I can I can start. Yeah, I can start. No, 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 um, ma'am. Let me introduce you again. No, no, no. Please, please, yeah, don't do that. It's fine. It's fine. It was interrupted. No, no, it's perfectly all right. Perfectly all right. Um, okay, yeah. Ambassador Rifat, uh, it's it's honor to introduce Ambassador Rifat, who is uh, who was the first woman invited to Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, Ambassador Rifat, now you can take us into the regional level and share your insights on how you believe that how this uh, membership will benefit Iran and the whole region at large and how sanctions will impact the benefit of this membership. Thank you so much. Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. I hope I'm audible to everyone. Um, I would first of all like to thank uh, Ambassador Nadim Riaz and his entire team in IRS to, uh, in organizing such an important uh, webinar on this uh, subject, which is of course both timely and uh, significant in the sense that uh, we are going to be talking about an organization which plays a very, very crucial role and is uh, destined, I believe, to play a cru crucial role in this region. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome Rai Surkhabi. Khali khushhal shudam ke shumara didam ba in webinar. Khali khali mamnoon asam ke shumara din. Hope now um, there are a few things. I mean, actually, after uh, Dr. Surkhabi, I think it's um, I, I really don't have uh, so much to say except a few things that I thought. Uh, we should uh, consider. Uh, 
when it comes to uh, Iran, uh, Iran's uh, presence and its uh, role in the region. And then, of course, Iran's role and what Iran's expectations are from the SCO and what the SCO members would expect from Iran. So uh, first of all, uh, we must remember that SCO uh, started off as a small organization back in uh, 2001. And it has expanded with a um, specific purpose for security, bringing about security and stability. It's not so much an economic forum, uh, but it does, of course, economy affects uh, stability and security. So economic, uh, this economic situation of member states as well as the region plays an important role in the peace and security agenda of the SCO. And we must also remember, look at the membership of SCO uh, which, uh, apart from the two heavyweights, uh, Russia and China, uh, consists of uh, countries uh, who are uh, facing some form of economic uh, downturn or economic crisis of, of uh, a certain level, a certain degree. Uh, therefore, may maybe we cannot consider it to be the Eastern answer to NATO, nor should we think about it as the answer to this newly formed alliance quad. But I think despite that, despite the fact that the membership may not be, may not have the highest GDP ratings, it is significant because of the region where SCO is based. And this region is of course, um, both as the Chinese call it interesting and as the English word interesting means, it is interesting region because there is a lot happening. It is uh, a volatile region. It is a region with uh, immense uh, political, economic, social, uh, strategic uh, issues, which keep uh, daunting and haunting it every now and then. And therefore, um, it was a very uh, important decision by the, um, original, the founding members, and then gradually as the organization expanded to include uh, Pakistan and then India, of course, and now uh, Iran, to, in, to make a regional bloc, as you would call it, or a regional uh, organization, which would focus on fixing its own problems. Instead of looking West, as we traditionally uh, have been doing and like to do, uh, for obvious uh, historical reasons and also for um, uh, compulsions, economic compulsions and other compulsions, strategic compulsions. Instead of looking west or east or north and south, we just look within ourselves and try to find uh, answers to our problems, solutions to our um, challenges. Uh, and therefore, uh, I think the uh, join, joining of Iran, even though it was just a few months ago, um, is very significant for the organization and for the member states, because I think Iran was one country which was basically the missing link, I believe, that when we had China, Russia, Central Asian countries, Pakistan, India, then one of the natural uh, partners in this uh, neighborhood, of course, would be uh, Iran to become a member. And of course, the significance of SCO is, is, uh, is very clear as uh, other member states uh, a little further away from the immediate neighborhood like Turkey and even Saudi Arabia and Qatar are, are either observers or dialogue partners, or at least trying to become more and more involved in SCO. Now, um, but we must also look at Iran itself, that why would Iran want to be a member of the SCO? I mean, as I said earlier, it doesn't really hold so much economic clout, as you would call it. Uh, it is more of a strategic and security organization, but that's precisely the reason why Iran, a country heavily sanctioned by the West, isolated in the world, would look towards an organization uh, where it could at least find a foothold, a place on the table. And I think SCO provided that answer. I think other regional organizations such as the OIC or, or SARC or ECO 
um, have not had that kind of impact uh, which would bring a country like Iran, for instance, out of its isolation or at least bring Iran into a place where it could have some kind of an impact or it could play a significant role in policy making in the region. And I think SCO is one uh, organization which provides it that platform. So Iran, of course, was lobbying very hard for, I don't know, more than a decade, I think 15 years or so, uh, to get into this organization. It was successful. Uh, basically, just to, uh, from the Iranian point of view, I'd say, as a counterweight or as um, uh, an, in, uh, an, an indication or an, um, uh, a message to the West that, look, uh, you may have sanctioned me, you may have isolated me, you have been ostracizing me from the rest of the world. But here, I, in my own region, I have found an organization which consists of China and Russia, most significantly, who are willing to take me on and where I can play an important role in peace building and peacemaking. And I think that is what Iran um, was looking for and by becoming a member is hoping to develop further and achieve. And that is why uh, when uh, President Raisi went uh, to Dushanbe, I mean, he, he officially, I think at that point, Iran decided to officially look east rather than west. Don't forget traditionally, historically, Iran has always looked west. Um, even before the 1979 revolution and even after it, because um, in the Shah's days, of course, it was a Western, uh, totally Western ally. But even in 19, after 1979, after the Islamic revolution, relations with Russia were not very good with, between Iran and Russia. And uh, relations with China were not very good. And even our own relations with Iran have been up and down. So Iran was not facing a very comfortable neighborhood and it did not look at itself as cooperating with any of its neighbors uh, due to its ideological um, uh, status and, and what it perceived itself to be as a, as a, as a leader of the Islamic world or whatever. And there were, there were different rivalry, rivalries coming out. But now, I think after this uh, official joining and which will of course take some time before it is actually official, but the fact that the door has been opened I think Iran is now officially looking east, or at least looking around its neighborhood. And it's, it was not out of the ordinary uh, that it happened. You see, I mean, don't forget, we have had a recent agreement, a 25 euro strategic um, agreement between China and Iran, in which China will invest heavily in Iran. Uh, we have relations between Iran and Russia developing and uh, becoming closer. Uh, our own relations with Iran, although there are ups and downs being border countries, we have our issues, but overall we have had, uh, we have good relations, a good, uh, and we see a lot of, there's a lot of commonality in our relations, especially when it comes to peace and security within the region. And especially, I'll come later to Afghanistan, but especially in Afghanistan, I think there's a lot of areas where Pakistan and Iran can work very closely. Um, and of course, India, India, uh, Iran and India have a longstanding uh, economic uh, relationship. So given all that scenario, it was only natural for Iran to become a member of the SCO. And it was uh, for Iran, it's an opening uh, whereby it can now claim to be on the high table where it can decide. Uh, Iran's policy, don't forget, has always been that don't look towards the United States as um, uh, Ambassador Surkhabi has just pointed out that, you know, we, we don't want to look at the Western countries. We want to look at our own neighborhood and see where we can achieve, uh, what we can achieve and how we can progress. And of course, uh, economics is a strong um, com component of that. But uh, linked to the economics is, of course, the peace and security uh, in, in, in this region. Now, uh, immediate what would be the immediate outcome of, uh, and, and what would be the litmus test, as I would say, between uh, with Iran and, and SCO, the role of SCO in this region is of course Afghanistan. Uh, and as uh, um, Ambassador Surkhabi pointed out, Iran has of course uh, been one of those countries like Pakistan that has suffered immensely due to the crisis in Afghanistan, uh, even before and uh, 
after the US uh, invasion after 9-11, and then now even after the US withdrawal, uh, Iran is one country which will be at the forefront because of the refugees and, the and being a border country. So Afghanistan, of course, what role the SCO plays, how SCO is able to work as an organization with all the member states on board in trying to stabilize Afghanistan will of course be the litmus test. And don't forget, all these countries, China, Russia, Pakistan, Iran, India, all the SCO member states in Central Asia have a direct, um, they have, uh, uh, should I say, they are directly influenced by what happens in Afghanistan. And nobody wants, none of these countries want that instability in Afghanistan should spill over to their uh, borders, which has happened in the past and which we have suffered from. So this is one area in Afghanistan where all these member states can cooperate well to bring bringing about a peace and in fact show the world also that we have this regional organization in which we have these countries who can actually cooperate with each other, look to each other and work towards stabilizing a very, very significant important country like Afghanistan. So it is in fact, as I, as I always say, it is the litmus test for, for SCO and for our member states, for Pakistan, for Iran, for Russia and China to see how we can work towards bringing about stability in Afghanistan. Of course, it has to be through economic cooperation. It has to be through political and strategic dialogues, but all this has to come with the um, with caveat of um, uh, cooperating within themselves. Now, let's not forget also that Iran has recently, uh, when, it, when it was sanctioned uh, very recently, uh, and I was there at the time when President Trump was in power and the US decided to pull out of the JCPOA, this was uh, one of the things that disappointed the Iranians a great deal because um, within Iran, there were, there were two uh, divergent views uh, on whether Iran should actually join the JCPOA, work with the, a country which, is, which it has never trusted. And that included the Ayatollah himself, Ayatollah Khomeini on many, and Khamenei on many occasions has mentioned that, you know, you never trust the Americans, never trust the West. We shouldn't be joining the JCPOA, but it was, of course, the previous government uh, in the forefront, the previous foreign minister, the president, who were pushing because they were hoping to get Iran out of the isolation. And in this, with this agreement, to relieve it of the various sanctions and the difficulties it was facing in selling its oil. When the United States decided to pull out of the JCPOA, and mind you, even now, today, we don't know how the talks are going and that there are talks taking place in, in Vienna, but of course, uh, there's no uh, major outcome and it doesn't seem that there will be a big outcome of these talks. So it is forcing this, this reality and the economic reality within Iran has actually forced it in a way to look towards China, look towards Russia and, and organizations like the SCO and even boost up an organization like ECO so that you know it can move more and more towards self-reliance or at least reliance within the neighborhood. Now, despite all this that uh, Iran is, uh, was, uh, is very uh, happy to be a member of the SCO and uh, is, sees itself as coming out of that isolation and sees itself as an important regional power which can play a role in stability of this region. We must not forget the inter-country uh, rivalries that exist. For example, uh, there are divergences even within the SCO and within countries of the SCO. And these are, these are important things to remember. Uh, even, as I said, between these, uh, this acronym, Pakistan, Iran, uh, Russia, China, there are divergences within these countries and we don't, uh, we need to consider those and see how much of an impact these divergences would have on the significant, on the importance and the, the effectiveness of SCO. Not only are there divergences within these countries, Iran, Pakistan have uh, issues on the border, as we all know, Russia, Iran are, okay, they're partners, Russia and Iran and China are partners, but you know, there are still uh, problems, bilateral issues between these countries. We also have to see that uh, how important, I mean, how well we would overcome our bilateral issues or, or, and try to look at the big picture, overcome our divergences for the greater good and look towards cooperating as a regional bloc. This we have to see because don't forget, as I said, right at the beginning, 
Russia and China are the heavyweights. The rest of the countries, we have a host of economic uh, problems, a host of economic issues, which tie us down. Uh, we don't have the military prowess of, of the NATO countries, for instance. So, you know, we have to see how well we will be able to cooperate within ourselves by our own issues. And the most important issue outside that is, of course, the issue of sanctions, which you mentioned in your intro also, that the sanctions on Iran also have, would have, I believe, some form of impact. Because while we all may like to say, and we all would make these speeches that the US has no role or the West has no role to play in our region, we should, we should work towards ourselves and solve our own problems. We know that the realities are different. We know that pragmatism shows us that the United States does play an important role. And there are countries in this region and members of this organization who have strong ties with the United States or at least important ties with the United States. So therefore maneuvering with the US and its allies um, as well as maintaining uh, a balance within SCO and moving towards cooperation in the SCO given the sanctions on Iran is going to be another challenge apart from the Afghanistan challenge, this is another challenge with SCO member states will face. Even India, for instance, India has a good relationship, a very good relationship with uh, Iran. It has a good relationship with Russia, although not as, co as warm as it was previously, but still. But its relations with Pakistan and China are not good at all. And it is a very close partner of the United States. Now, India is a member of the SCO. So how are we going to balance all this Within, our, within the organization and see how the organization uh, moves forward. So yes, I, I believe that sanctions uh, will have some, although bilaterally China and Russia continue to trade with, with Iran despite the sanctions, we also have a, a, a trading relationship with um, Iran, although it's not as good as we would like it to be, and so does India. But the sanctions do, are there, they do have an impact. And of course, our own divergences, as well as the situation in Afghanistan, these are all challenges, which will show how significant SCO will be as an organization. But I know for speaking from uh, the Iranian perspective, as I was there, as you mentioned, I think the Iranians at the moment for themselves, they are looking that, well, this is one way of getting out of their isolation. And that is what they're going to look at. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador Rippon, for such a comprehensive analysis about the Iran's inclusion in SEO and highlighting the divergence of interest between Pakistan, Iran, Russia, and China. Your recommendations for Pakistan Iran relations are very significant for both the countries. Now, I would like to introduce our last speaker, who is also an academic expert on Iran. Uh, Professor Dr. Lubna Abed Ali. Professor Dr. Lubna Abed Ali is a professor of international relations and dean FCS at NDU. She has an academic experience of 35 years. She was the founding director of School of Politics and IR uh, at Kaidi Azam University. Her area of expertise are global political economy, comprehensive. Uh, politics and foreign uh, and foreign policy analysis. She has written extensively on South Asia and Middle East. She is a gold medalist from University of Punjab. Received her doctorate in international relations from Azam University, Islamabad. She has been the UNESCO Fellow at Middle East Studies Institute, Columbia University, New York, and research associate in the Oriental Institute, University of Oxford. Dr. Lubna did her postdoctoral research and courses from Washington University. She was awarded an International Scholars Award by Institute of International Education in 1996. Dr. Lubna is the holder of International Peace Award United Nations in 2008 and has been recommended as Ambassador for Peace by Universal Peace Federation United Nations 2011. Professor Dr. Lubna, I would request you to share your academic insight about the impact of Iran's membership in SCO. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Fosnani. I'm grateful to the IRS for holding this significant uh, 
uh, webinar on the to to highlight the role and significance of the region which is Asia. Uh, it's I, I find it difficult to speak after the Ambassador Surkhabi and uh, Ambassador. Pause here. Ma'am, we cannot hear you. Three basic assumptions of new Dr. Lubna, please uh, unmute your mic. Dr. Lubna, we can't hear you. Please unmute your mic. I'm sorry, I'm not able to hear uh, Dr. Lupna. Is it? Uh... Jose is trying to unmute. Uh... Okay. All right. Um, I... Thank you, Dr. Fosia. And I'm grateful to the IRS for holding up this significant a webinar on an emerging issue and uh, with the changing dynamics. Uh, I feel very uh, difficult to speak after Ambassador Surkhavi and Ambassador Rikhat Masood's elaboration on the convergence and divergence of the interests of SEO and the major objectives of Iran after obtaining the process of uh, membership in SEO. Due to changing dynamics of unilateralism and hegemony, the focus is shifted from states to institutions. The area has emerged as a subfield of international politics and is known as neoliberal institutionalism and regionalism. There are three fundamental assumptions, uh, as highlighted by Stephen Kressner, that principles, norms, rules, and decision making procedures around which actor expectations converge in a given issue area. The second one is the use of multiple channels of action between societies in interstate, transgovernmental, and transnational relations. Third is the absence of hierarchy of issues with changing agendas and linkage between issues that are prioritized. The decline of military force and coercive power in international relations has led to the emergence of regionalism. There are four pillars, three pillars of the fundamental objectives of SCO since its inception in 2001. First is the ensuring regional peace and security. The second is eliminating extremism, separatism, and terrorism. The third one is facilitating economic cooperation. As regards uh, Iran, the three fundamental cardinal principles of Iranian foreign policy as enshrined in their constitution fully commensurate with all these three objectives of SCO. The first is Islami Jamhuriya Iran. The second is Iran-e-Mustaqil. 
and the Qasadiyah Khutkafariyah Iran. The, and with 615 miles of Gulf coastline, Iran is the more predominant state in the Gulf region, and it holds keys to many of the issues that the societies and the governments face in the uh, region of uh, comprising SEO state member states. Iran and Pakistan share as Mr. Rifat Masood has rightly pointed out about the significance of US withdrawal from Afghanistan, Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, Iran and Afghanistan, they share a tri-junctional border. Iran shares 921 kilometers and Pakistan shares a Durant line 2,670 kilometers of border with Afghanistan. And any instability within Afghanistan can have a spillover effect in the neighboring region, for which the membership of Iran in SCO holds the keys to the resolution of several of the main issues related with countering terrorism, extremism, and regional instability. As regards Iran's membership in the SCO, one major objective is obtained which is highlighted by the Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi in his statement at SCO summit. He said that the world has entered a new era where hegemony and unilateralism are declining. And on the basis of the unilateral sanctions that had been imposed upon Iran by the United States, the membership process of Iran in SCO means that these are considered not as the international sanctions, but they are being considered as unilateral sanctions imposed by United States. The primary goal is to neutralize common threats, which is the fundament enshrined in the Charter of SCO as regards national security and territorial integrity of the member states arising from terrorism separatism and radical movements. Full membership requires making commitment and taking a formal position in the organization's decision-making processes. And Iran as a member of SEO might be expected to express its stance towards certain of the complicated regional security issues where both China and Pakistan have Surging territorial disputes with India. If the ongoing similarly nuclear negotiations be between Tehran and Washington can result in the return of UN sanctions against Iran, then membership process may take longer. But Iran's membership provides Iran with an opportunity to look towards the East and revive its um, economy that has been subject to the continuous U.S. sanctions on its banking and trade. Uh, on the other hand, Afghanistan as a top issue at the Tajikistan summit, then the U.S. exit from Afghanistan has changed the regional landscape. And Iran can play a major role in mitigating the impact of the influx of refugees, which are already uh, to the tune of maybe 1.5 million uh, could flee to Iran in search of safety as well as jobs. Iranian, Sistan, Balochistan, Pakistan's Balochistan, and the Helmand province of Afghanistan. This is a tri-junctional tri border. And from there, the three issues, drug trafficking, control of the joint sharing of and patrolling of the border to control the illegal trafficking, as well as extremism can be shared jointly. With joint decision making and sharing of information, the region can obtain peace and security that is threatened by the withdrawal of the U.S. from Afghanistan. Then Iran has uh, suffered 
for a long time due to the isolationism imposed by uh, US policy on Iran. From Ayatollah Khomeini's neither East nor West, Iran has evolved with a reorientation of its foreign policy that is looking towards East and expansion of its trade and other um, uh, multilateral um, platform to obtain its uh, security as well as um, economic objectives in the region. Uh, then geographically, Afghanistan is part of SEO region. It is direct neighbor to four SEO member states, China, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan. Out of 150 ethnic groups living in the SEO region, around 50 are living in Afghanistan. That could have a multiplier effect in the whole SEO region, resulting in a more culturally and ethnically connected region with the greater sharing of the cultural as well as civilizational context, Iran's membership can promote stability at the regional level and also in the neighborhood. Uh, then, uh, not only to resist its economic isolation from the West, but also to address its banking trade problems created by the uh, consistent U.S. sanctions. Over the past few decades, China and Iran have also developed a $400 billion agreement covering China's energy needs, and there could be relative gains acquired through energy initiatives across the region that can strengthen the cooperation among the member states. The relative gains can promote the defense cooperation and strategic balancing against the hegemony and the domination of the predominant power that is the United States of America. Iran's accession uh, that has been approved after the 15 years and it has been hailed by the Iranian media as a great victory for Iran's new president, Ibrahim Raisi, uh, who took office in 2020, August 21. It highlights Iran's closer ties, not only with China, but Russia at the same time, when all three countries, they are facing mounting pressure from Washington. Uh, and the uh, SCO membership can promote the not only uh, economic and trade ties and uh, can counter terrorism, but it could also promote the regional connectivity and people to people contacts. Uh, uh, as uh, aptly mentioned by Ambassador Rifat Masood, that though there are uh, areas of divergence and uh, uh, competition between the major members of SEO, like uh, Russia and China. Uh, China's growing dominance in Central Asia is a concern for Russia, which considers the region to be its sphere of influence. And that could be uh, countered by Russia's uh, uh, creation of the free economic zone, which is EA, EU, Eurasian Economic Union, within which uh, Iran can have a greater share and uh, cooperation with Russia in economic, uh, in the domain of economics and in the uh, re reformulation and in updating of its outmoded uh, um, oil infrastructure. So uh, Iran's participation in SCO can further contribute towards the relative gains and towards promotion of stability. Iran was a missing link in this important regional organization that held uh, India 
Russia, China, and Pakistan uh, as the major partners. And there are three added uh, dialogue partners as well, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and uh, Oman, I think. Oman, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia. So therefore, this uh, SCO is now emerging as a major regional um, platform to address the issues that confront all these states in the context of global transformations that are rap rapidly uh, undergoing a shift in the ends and means of foreign policy. Thank you. Thank you so much, you so much. Professor Dr. Lumna Abed Ali for such a comprehensive academic view about the Iran's membership in SEO. Now we will go ahead and take some time for questions. Just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box in your control panel. First of all, I would like to invite President IRS Ambassador Nadeem Riaz. Um, uh, sir, if you have comment or questions. Lucia, we can start with the questions. Uh, that we, can okay, we have a question from our student. Um, um, she's um, Aksa Khalid from National Defense University. Her question is, after getting full membership of SCO and extending your um, uh, reach further from Central and South Asia to the Middle East, what measures do you think that the Iran government will take to counter extremism terrorism and uh, separation in the region. This question is referred to the um, uh, Deputy Ambassador, Iran. Ambassador Mohammed Sohabi, can you hear me? Please unmute your mic. We have another question. Uh, uh, it is referred to Dr. Uh, Ambassador Rifat Masood. Um, Ambassador Rifat. Okay. okay. Uh, we can hear uh, Ambassador Mohammed Sarhabi. Uh, thank you, Madam. Uh, about <clears throat> this question, uh, Iran is trying to to uh, take it the major steps towards developed relation with its neighbors, and an important uh, guide for Asia-oriented foreign policy of Iran. We are trying to go this way. And many, many things, inshallah, is happen. Dr. Fozia, we can. Uh... Okay, we can have another question to Dr. Uh, I'm sorry, Ambassador Rifat Masood. Uh, becoming an SCO member, will Iran get the economic benefit of sanction relief to um, reboot its oil export? How will you um, uh, analyze that, the counter the multipolar world order, keeping in mind um, the involvement? of Iran and uh, shipping and oil tankers along with facilities in the Persian Gulf and in tariff free trade agreement um, with EAEU, which has uh, um, 
nervousness among the Arab states in the Persian Gulf? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I would just like to um, refer to my earlier uh, uh, talk in which I said that the SEO is actually not an economic, uh, it's, it's, it's not an economic cooperation organization. It is focused more on, on security and peace and, and uh, strategic relations. But of course, economy plays an important role. And Iran, of course, is looking for any window which would allow it to get some relief from the sanctions which have been imposed. Uh, now, given that, Iran, you must remember that Iran already has um, a very good relationship, economic relationship, given the restrictions of the sanctions. But despite that, it has a good economic relationship with China. China is Iran's largest trading partner. They are purchasing Iranian oil and they are investing in Iran. Iran also has a very uh, good economic partnership with uh, Russia, and it also has a strong, uh, relatively strong relationship with um, India uh, through Chabahar. So um, the sanctions, of course, play a major role in inhibiting uh, sale of Iranian oil uh, through the Persian Gulf, uh, through um, overland pipelines or, or through the maritime seaways. But what, what one must remember that Iran has very, uh, uh, there are many options for Iran in bilateral relations with these countries. And, and they have been exploring these options with us also, with Pakistan that you know, uh, we can in some way, uh, because the actual product, the gas, for instance, is, is not a sanctioned product. But of course, the financial mechanism involved in paying for the gas or paying for the energy is sanctioned. So you know, there, there are ways of getting around it. I don't see any uh, major breakthrough coming through, through SEO, through its membership of SEO. I don't see any major breakthrough coming in vis-a-vis -vis its sale of oil or relief of its economic uh, issues. The relief that Iran would get from, uh, for its economy are through bilateral mechanisms that already exist with individual member states of SCO. Those are there. Those are there despite the sanctions. Those are there despite the restrictions on, uh, on um, exporting of Iranian oil. Uh, through the Persian Gulf, and those those exist because countries have found uh, various, they have evolved various mechanisms in which they can um, trade with Iran. But uh, through SEO, as becoming a member of SEO, I don't see that that would have any, uh, it would bring any relief to Iran through sanctions because sanctions are there. The only relief that can come to Iran through sanctions is if there is a breakthrough in the JCPOA talks. And if the Western countries decide, and the United States in particular, to lift those sanctions, but um, through the, I don't think the SCO can play an important role in that. Um, I mean, of course, Ambassador Surhabi uh, may like to add to that. I don't know, but I feel that any relief that Iran gets economically will be through bilateral mechanisms that it has with individual countries. Okay, thank you so much, Ambassador Rifat. Um, now we have another question from uh, Mr. Fasil. Ambassador Sukhabi wants to, yeah, he wants to oh, say Only something. one sentence. Okay. Uh, Ambassador Sukhabi, you want to add something? Oh, only one sentence, that uh, about that the corridor in north and west, uh, sorry, north to south and south to north and east and west, we can uh, activate it the North and South Corridor and East-West Corridor. East-West for Pakistan and uh, Chinese and North to uh, West, uh, South to North for the Indian and the other countries in CIS countries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have another question from Mr. Faisal. How Iran play a pro prominent role in the future security and economic issues 
and uh, that connects South Asia, Central Asia, and the Middle East, keeping in view the three regions of geopolitical and geoeconomic importance, including stability in Afghanistan and the infrastructural connectivity um, linking South Asia, the Middle East, and Eurasia. Um, Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Lubna Abedali, would you like to answer this question? Sure. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pozia. It's a, an important question and a pertinent one. Um, just like as Pakistan shares 1,670 kilometers long border uh, with Afghanistan, China also shares a small border at the Wakhan Strait. And uh, uh, there is the possibility of the ETIM, the East Turkmenistan Islamic Movement, uh, that could become a base for the terror networks like Islamic State or Al Qaeda. Uh, if the Afghanistan is uh, goes uh, becomes unstable, uh, Iran in this context, as the member of SCO, Iran has already placed the um, uh, refugees coming from Afghanistan in uh, camps, and uh, that is one of the key for any of the projects' uh, viability economically and being functional for the uh, elimination of extremism and terrorism. Uh, there, there could be the possibility of uh, uh, holding uh, several of these um, extremist uh, elements uh, under, the control, under control by the sharing of information between the member states. Multilateralism also means the joint decision making and the sharing of information that can reduce uh, uh, extremism and terrorism. Uh, similarly, in the Middle East, Iran holds keys to many of the problems that, are, uh, that may create instability. And with the dialogue partners of SCO, uh, Qatar, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia, uh, Iran simultaneously can enter into communication and negotiation with them. Whatever else, Islamic Jamhuriya Iran is a pragmatic state and pragmatism defines their foreign policy. It is the, a platform that would provide them with the communication channels to address those outstanding uh, conflictual issues that create instability in the Middle East as well. As regards uh, South Asia, the Northern CPEC, uh, by joining the uh, uh, CPEC even, Iran could become the member of the Northern CPEC. And as in the uh, visit of the uh, um, in, uh, last time by the Iranian president, he mentioned that uh, Shah Bahar is a uh, port for the uh, prosperity of the people of the region. So that, can, that could lead to the uh, elimination of the um, uh, poverty, widespread poverty, and uh, could promote economic development in the region with the participation of Iran in the SU. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Lubna. Um, Ambassador Griffith, um, would you like to add something in this uh, answer? Um, uh, actually, uh, no, I feel that um, uh, uh, Ambassador, uh, Dr. Lubna has, has put it very succinctly. As I said, you know, uh, we, must, we must see that, uh, as I said in my talk also, that the U.S. is a very, very important uh, player in not only uh, global uh, politics, but even in our own regional politics. And while Russia and the United States and China and the United States and Iran and the United States, they all have issues, they all have major problems and they are, and they are entering into very, very difficult relations. Yet I don't think that any of these countries would want to sort of jeopardize uh, their relations with these countries at the cost of any economic, um, economic issues. And I think the focus at the moment is purely regional. Number one focus is Afghanistan. 
to bring about peace in Afghanistan. Once that is achieved, I think that they can move on to other things. I think that no country in this SEO would want to do anything or carry out any kind of a program which could, you know, um, jeopardize in a major way. It's because I don't think the SEO countries, as I said in, the, in my talk also, are that strong enough to do it, you know, either militarily or economically. So Dr. what Dr. Libna was saying is absolutely spot on. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have another question from uh, Saba Mir. Um, she's student of international relations, UCP Lahore. And her question is, what measures will the Iranian government undertake to expand SEO's mandate of economic cooperation and energy deployment, keeping in mind the new international relations globally, whereas in the recent past, the main opposition is the USA. Uh, this question um, is from um, uh, Ambassador Mohammad Sohabi. Uh, Madam, uh, I want to refer very, very slight and very, very short. Uh, we are used to such behavior of the United States. Uh, according to the Iranian, it's a famous sentence. If it is now to, to the other people, it is memory for us. We have many, many plans for, for the expansion of the energies, cooperation to, to the region, and uh, all the issues in the region. For example, currently the issue of the humanitarian aid to Afghanistan is another area to cooperation between the, uh, the, the, the countries in the region. Uh, and uh, we, we are trying to create a stability and lasting peace is another, ex, uh, another axis of the uh, uh, cooperation between that the Iran and the other countries uh, in the region. In the energy, you know that uh, very, very uh, good and reliable sources in, in Iran and the other uh, countries in CIS countries and Russia. And we can use it of this uh, reliable energy uh, to, to, to the region and all the countries if they need it. Uh, in, in, the, in the fight of against that, uh, uh, for example, in Daesh, IS, uh, IS in, in Syria and Iraq, we, we, Iran has uh, many, many experience uh, and was able, you know, that defeated them there. Uh, these experience can be used in another another fields in in the region as well. Uh, you know that uh, many many potential is available, and uh, inshallah, Iran is a good, very very good part partnership for for all the countries in uh, they gather to the SCO. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, I, I was surrounded by ladies and have no any supporter here. We are your supporters. <laughs> thank As you. Thank Rabi, you we are your supporters. <laughs> okay. Um, Professor Dr. Lubna, would you like to add your comments? Uh, after Mr. Sohabi and uh, Ambassador Rifat Masood, uh, it is uh, may, maybe it seems inappropriate, but let me add that uh, Iran is able to cultivate relations with, uh, with the American rivals like uh, Russia and China, and Iran is capable of uh, having relations with American partners like India. So I think that Iran's partnership in SEO would lead to greater stability and promotion of regional connectivity and the elimination of extremism and terrorism from this area. 
Thank, thank you so much, Professor Rubna. Um, we have another question as the honorable speakers highlighted the uh, divergence among SCU members. Are there any prospects of emerging another bloc constituted by Russia, Iran, and India since they are enjoying very good relations in terms of economy and security? Um, and this, this question is referred to all panelists. So I will take uh, your comments one by one. Um, Ambassador Rifat, would you like to speak first on uh, this subject? Actually, I've already uh, given a written answer to that question because I was following it in chat, but I will also point it out to you that I don't think that is possible. I don't see that happening because uh, let's not, as I said, even in my talk that, you know, um, everybody, all these uh, member states individually, they, they do have uh, relations with the United States and they do have relations with other Western countries and they do have relations with the Gulf countries as well. And Iran too is reaching out, you know, the, what are these JCPOA talks? They're basically, you know, to mend fences and to get all these countries on board so Iran can open up uh, its uh, trade with other countries and the sanctions can be lifted. I mean, Iran is also keen on engaging uh, with the Western powers to, um, to have its sanctions lifted. Russia the same, China, despite the fact that it has a very difficult relation with the United States, it doesn't want to close its doors. And India, of course, is a very, very close partner of the United States. So I think that India and Iran and Russia coming together as a sub-regional bloc, I don't see that happening. I don't think it, uh, it is prudent because I think that will clearly send, uh, that will create divisions, that will create even more divergences within the SCO for a start, which I don't think any of these countries would want, particularly Iran and Russia would not want it because they want to, uh, Iran being a new entrant would want to keep its relations with all the countries on par. And also it would not, um, it would not suit the SEO's purpose uh, to have regional, sub-regional blocks coming out of its own organization. So I don't see that happening. Uh, and more so because don't forget as I, and I, for the, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but Iran already has vibrant, well, not very vibrant because it's a, it's a sanctioned country, but at least very good bilateral uh, cooperation with all these countries. So it doesn't need to actually open up another uh, regional forum uh, or a block, a sub-regional block of, of Iran, Russia, and India. It, it doesn't suit any of these countries. I don't see that happen. Uh, thank you so much, Ambassador Rifat. Uh, Ambassador Sohabi, would you like to comment on the same question? Uh, Madam, you, you see that the creating and uh, creating an economic security block between Iran, China, and Russia. Uh, these countries have the capacity and uh, are becoming partnership. A block may, may, may not uh, have been formed strategically, but it is tactical from the uh, office, inshallah, that uh, we can use it of this, uh, this situation between the three countries and SCO countries. Thank you, Madam. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Lubna Abiddali. Would you like to comment? Thank you, Professor Masood. Actually, uh, um, excellent extrapolation on the um, undermining of SCO if there are uh, emerging blocks within this regional organization. And Iran would not like to do that. Iran is pragmatic. And Iran already has, as stated by Ambassador Rifat Masood, it has got uh, excellent uh, bilateral relations with uh, China, as well as Russia and, as, uh, and India. And it does not need to constitute a block therein and to, to bifurcate SCO. It does not serve the purpose of SCO, the three major pillars of SCO, which is regional uh, security, uh, uh, countering terrorism, extremism, and, uh, uh, and um, separatism. This is separatism. They would not like to separate uh, into a block. 
And the third is economic uh, connectivity. And that is served uh, well with their bilateral relations with these three states. Thank you so much. Thank Professor. you so much, uh, Professor Dr. Lubna Abidali. Um, we have a last question from uh, Hamad. He's uh, from uh, IR department, sixth semester. His question is uh, Iran, Pakistan, and uh, Central Asian states all are uh, direct stakeholders in Afghanistan. How can they uh, galvanize uh, assistance through SCO framework? Uh, I'm referring uh, this question again to Ambassador Rifat, and then uh, I will take comments of uh, all panelists. Well, you see, that is the specific purpose of SCO. Uh, the major, the major number one problem that this region is facing is Afghanistan and stability in Afghanistan. So um, Iran, as well as the other SCO member states, they are constantly working or should be working to bring about stability in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is in fact, uh, as I said in my, in my talk also, the litmus test, but it is also an area which brings about convergences within SCO countries. So I think it is very, very important that uh, SCO member states as a, as a whole organization, bilaterally as well, individually, but also as part of the SCO members as the organization, they should be working on um, bringing about stability in Afghanistan. That is where Iran, Pakistan, Russia, China, they can all play a very significant role because all of these countries have stakes in Afghanistan. And I think that is one area where uh, the divergences can be changed into convergences and we can actually work together, cooperate as a region in Afghanistan. I, 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 see, I see a lot of potential in the SCO cooperation in, uh, in Afghanistan. That, is, that would be the answer. Thank you so much. Ambassador Sarkhabi, would you like to add your comments? Uh, Madam, that uh, about Afghanistan, you know that uh, um, many, many fields that we can uh, help to each other about the stability for, for Afghanistan. And uh, Mm. Efforts are also being made in fight against terrorism, drugs, and human trafficking. And we 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 are trying to to encourage them good uh, governance and uh, good coordination in is underway in, uh, in Afghanistan. Many, many potential we, we have, uh, and uh, we have joined uh, common culture, common uh, economy, many, many things uh, is available in Afghanistan between Iran, Pakistan, and Afghanistan, and CIS countries. Uh, we, we can help to each other, and inshallah that, for example, well, uh, currently, the issue of humanitarian aid to Afghanistan is another area uh, to cooperation between these countries. Uh, in one sentence, creating stability and uh, peace is very, very important for, for, for cooperation. Uh, the other country, uh, CIS countries, and CO, uh, this organization uh, members in, in Afghanistan. Thank you, Madam. 